Welcome back. This video is going to show you how to replenish the starter that's going to then go into your refrigerator. So let's get started. So if you've been following along with me and making our gluten-free sourdough starter together, your starter is now in the refrigerator, sleeping away, still active, but quietly active and slow. So what I'd recommend is that you watch your starter every time you open the refrigerator once a day, just take a peek and see how your starter's doing and record this with your rise timer in your notebook. This way you'll have an idea of how many days it takes your starter to reach its peak activity in the refrigerator. Then you can alter the ratio of feed to starter in order to fit your schedule and timing just perfectly. And this is going to take you a little bit of time to figure out. So be patient and kind to yourself. And don't worry if this first time that you're looking into the refrigerator, you think, oh no, my starter has already peaked and fallen. Remember, you can always feed it now and it will return to peak activity. So you can do this at any point and your starter will be okay because you've given it quite a bit of a feed. So just follow along and I'm going to show you exactly how to replenish it now that it's been in the refrigerator. If you are not following along with me to make your starter, don't worry, this still applies and you can follow along now and you can use this exact same instruction in order to place your starter into the refrigerator now. So let's get started. If you've been following along with me, you know by now that I always like to use a clean jar when I'm either replenishing or feeding, reactivating my starter. This way it's much cleaner and easier to tell when your starter has reached its peak. So we're going to take a nice clean jar. We're going to label it with the weight and label what's inside of it. Then we'll place it on our scale and tear our scale. Then we'll take our starter, which is hopefully at its perfect peak rise, out of the refrigerator. First, I'm going to show you what to do if you do want to bake today and you've already reactivated your starter. If you haven't yet taken your starter out of the refrigerator and reactivated it, go back and watch that video first. Reactivate your starter and then once your starter is at its peak activity, come back and watch this video. So we want to have our starter have already been reactivated and have it be at its peak activity. And as you can see here, my starter now is. So then what I'm going to do is figure out what my formula or recipe calls for. How much leaven or pre-ferment or active starter does it call for? The one I'm going to be using here calls for 150 grams of starter. So I will remove 150 grams of my nice peaked reactivated starter and place it into my clean jar. I will then set this aside and the remainder that is left in the jar is what I'm going to replenish to put back into the refrigerator. So right now I have 20 grams left in my jar so I can go ahead and feed it in the exact same way as if I had just taken it out of the refrigerator. So we're going to treat it now the exact same way that we would. So we're going to use the same instructions. So if you don't want to bake today, this is the instructions that you would follow. So let's assume you do not want to make 11 today. You don't want to bake and you're just needing to replenish your starter because it's in the refrigerator and you're still not ready to bake. This is how you would do it. Now, first things first, I would give your starter a good stir just to reincorporate all of the microorganisms in there. And then you'd remove about 10 to 20 grams of starter and you'll place it into your clean jar. So as you can see, it's a very small amount that's left in the jar. All we're going to leave in the jar is 20 grams. Now all we have left is this small amount and that's all you need in order to maintain your starter. And in fact, I've recently started discarding all but 10 grams and only keeping 10 grams and replenishing with 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. And this has been working great too. And it gives you plenty of starter. And by doing this, I'm keeping my starter at a low base acidity and also allowing it to last a lot longer in the refrigerator without having to replenish it. Mine lasts about a week in the refrigerator before it peaks. And then I pull it out and replenish it in exactly this way. 
So you can see in this video, I was not planning on baking within the next week, so I replenished my starter, 20 grams of my starter, with 100 grams of water and 100 grams of flour. Then I'm going to give it a really good mix and make sure to clean down the sides, replace the elastic so I can watch the level of its activity, and put the lid on and put it back in the refrigerator. And then, like I said, I would watch it over this next week and record it in my rise timer within my notebook. This way I know exactly how long it takes for my starter to peak when I feed it the one to five to five ratio and put it in the refrigerator. You may find it takes a little longer or a little less depending on your starter's health and activity. So feeding our starter a higher ratio of feed to starter allows us to be able to leave our starter in the refrigerator for at least a week without it becoming hungry. Because our fridge is only at four degrees Celsius, it is going to be slowing down the activity significantly. So keeping it in the refrigerator kind of allows it to go to sleep. However, it does go through the food. So it still is active. And if you're finding that with this one to five to five ratio, it's going through the food too fast, you can always increase the ratio. And here I'm showing that I have taken the starter and its feed out and placed it in a bowl to give it a mix. Some people will probably find this a lot easier and then replace it back into your jar. I love having a tall jar as it's easy to see where it's risen and fallen. However, it is difficult to mix, so the choice is up to you. So this is where you'll have to do a little thinking on how often you want to bake. If you'd like to bake in two days, for example, you may want to feed a smaller ratio of feed to starter. One of the best tips I could give you would be to try out different ratios of feed to starter while your starter is in the refrigerator. Play around with it and try different ratios and make sure to record it with your rise timer in your sourdough notebook. This way you'll be able to know exactly how many days it takes your starter to uh, reach its peak activity in the refrigerator when you feed it different ratios of feed to starter. And you can plan out exactly how much you should feed in order for you to bake when you want to bake and when it fits your schedule. So once your starter has been replenished and really well mixed, you're going to put on the cover to your jar and of course place your elastic marker. It will become your new best friend. Once that's done, you're going to label your jar and I like to label it with a few different things so I know exactly what it is. Your label should include the type of starter, the date of your last feed and the ratio of your feed or the amount of feed that you fed it. Now putting your starter into the refrigerator is kind of like putting it to sleep, but do you like to go to sleep with a full stomach or an empty stomach? I don't like to either. So I like to think of the starter in that way as well. So I leave the starter on the counter for about an hour after I've replenished it. Then I place it into the refrigerator, kind of get it going a little bit, give it a chance to digest a little bit of the food and then put it in. And I find that just makes it so much more successful. And finally, don't put your starter to bed hungry either. So if I was to have just taken that 20 grams or say I thought, oh, I've got 70 grams extra, I'll just throw that into the refrigerator. There's just not enough food. Once the starter has hit its peak, then the microorganisms are going to start to die off. So never put your starter to bed hungry either. Always give it a bit of a replenishment. And once again, just like humans, give it a replenishment, a little rest and a chill, and it'll be ready to work for you anytime you get the urge to bake sourdough. And that's literally it. All you need to do now is just pop your starter into the refrigerator and you can say good night for a week or until you want to bake again. Mine never stays in the refrigerator quite that long as I am always baking. And here you can see my water kefir grains, which I love, and my original bob, and of course some fermented vegetables, which I love to make. And you can find those recipes on my site. Until next time, Betty. If you have any questions at all about how to replenish your starter, please feel free to write them in the comments below and I'll do my best to find the answer for you. Until next time, bye-bye.